And here we go in his brand new pad. The guys just <laughs> continued to rise up the charts. It's Jacob Warren brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. And Jacob, somehow, some way, the break's over. Back to class. Spring semester yeah. has begun. Or are, are, you, are you ready to get learned, as they say, back in the 1800s? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm ready, man. I'm I'm excited. Um, obviously, this is <laughs> cool part, cool time of the year. Don't have a lot, you know, to do. Right, I've graduated twice now. I'm just taking pretty easy classes and not too stressed about assignments or or turning stuff in or tests or anything like that. So, I'm uh, just kind of trying to get in the groove of the start of the semester and just obviously we got winter workouts and everything. So not too much going on. Having a good time. So you've got. When did you get your second degree? Uh, in December, this past December, I graduated. Yeah. Okay, so you have two degrees now. I've got a bachelor's and I've got a master's. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Still thinking uh, kinesiology before I can sway you over to the broadcasting dark side. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was what my undergraduate was in. My graduate degree is in uh, agricultural leadership, education, and communication. So it's just I don't know. It's a lot of leadership skills and servant leadership and you know, nonprofits, adult learning, youth development, things like that. Just things that are, you know, interesting to know, learning about people, learning about how to handle people and communicate effectively, which has helped a lot, I guess, um, in this setting, right? Being able to talk and, and express how I feel and how I think effectively. Um, and yeah, could lead to maybe some broadcasting in the future. We'll see. I know you're a big proponent for that. So we'll I am. That. I'm not. I'll be, I'll be, I'll make time to be your agent if you need one. Yeah. But, um, Jacob, let's, let's get to a couple of big news topics that have hit recently. And that is mm -hmm. uh, Danny White and Josh Heupel getting contract extensions. And these aren't just contract extensions that you give to show a coach that is going to be there for five years in recruiting. Sometimes yeah. those are just given out, but these are big time commitments by the university. And yeah, again, I lean towards you being a local guy. If you've seen what Tennessee went through, how cool is that to have that foundation and that future cemented on paper? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you kind of mentioned it, just how things have gone in the past, right? It, it seems like it's become the norm for, you know, for w one reason or another, you know, whatever it may be for a coach to kind of, you know, do his time a couple of years. Um, and then it seems like people are calling for him to get out if he's not quite good, doing well enough or, you know, may have a, a few good seasons where, you know, kind of looks like things are going the right direction and then it kind of just falls off, maybe just a bad year and then, and then they're out of there. So, the fact that, that the university and that um, our athletic department and everyone and even Coach Hype was willing to, you know, make that deal and, and lock him in for <clears throat> that that amount of time, right? And, and it just shows kind of who he is and um, what he means to, to this program and kind of just the support that he has, you know, from, from everybody, which is amazing because obviously that's somebody you want to play for. So I'm um, obviously excited to him to continue to go and, and just see how far this thing can go. It's been a fast two years when you think yeah. that he and Danny Watt were just hired two years ago this month. Yeah. Yeah. And I can remember the first time uh, meeting coach and meeting Danny White and, and Danny coming and talking to us about, you know, who he wanted in, in that position. And obviously I think he found, found the perfect guy and uh, yeah, it has, it has been pretty quick the past, the past couple of years. It's weird looking back at it. What were your early impressions of both of those guys in particular, Danny White? Cause I don't think we've discussed that before because You'd been told a lot of things were going to happen before they showed up that didn't happen. But what they've sure. said is going to happen has happened. Yeah, for sure. Um, even before Danny had a great relationship with the athletic director, obviously Coach Fulmer was the athletic director. And, and um, you know, he did a good job. He, he um, represented the university well, represented us well, uh, was fully supportive of us as football players, as athletes. Um, so, for some reason, I've always had a pretty good connection with, with the AD, but when uh, Danny gets here, uh, Mr. White gets here, I'll say, no, he wouldn't let me call him that. Um, <laughs> when Danny gets here, um, yeah, man, he's, he's just very personable. Um, it's not like he never tries to make it feel like, you know, he's up top and everybody else is below. He, he, he eats down in, in our dining, dining facilities sometimes. You know, you'll see him down there just kind of meeting or talking with people. And anytime you're in the hallways with him, he'll, he'll always make sure to say hey and um, obviously travels with us and stuff to, to some away games and um, just always super supportive and always, you know, wants to make sure that, that he emphasizes that he's around and that he's available and that he, he cares about us and, and all the other sports. And 
um, I think that obviously kind of shows in how everybody's doing, right? How how the all the programs are are succeeding. You know, I saw something the other day talking about the basketball team. I think the baseball team and the football team are all top ten in the country, and that's the first time that's been done in however long. And um, yeah, it's just kind of testament to him and his leadership. Um, as far as Coach Hype, obviously, you know, he comes in and and I think acknowledges the fact that. You know, this program and the players here that were here at the time, obviously some of us are still here, most of us, um, you know, we've been through a lot and that it, it's going to be hard for us to trust him. And he acknowledged that. He said, look, I, I'm not asking you to trust me right now, but I'm asking you to just hear what I'm saying. And um, after I show you that my actions are going to match my words, um, then we can start building this trust and, and start really getting places. And so I think that was pretty quick that we all realized that he was what he was about and he, or what he was talking about is really how, you know, things were, he's going to love us. He's going to care for us, but he's going to push us and, and show us how to, I guess, reach our max potential. And, and obviously we're not there yet. Um, but yeah, he's lived up to it ever since. And so I respect him and, and appreciate him for that. You've been around pre NIL and post NIL, and you're one of the players that have, have done well with NIL. You've been able to make your brand and, in Tennessee. And I think that's fantastic. And I love being a part of that. I always used to wonder, and this isn't that long ago, this is three years ago before yeah. NIL became a thing. I used to wonder when a coach signed a big contract and, and Josh Heupel was worth $9 million in my opinion, but I always used to wonder how players would take that when you see a big number like that and you're, you're not getting a piece of the pie. Do, do players view that differently now that you're able to, to get something at all when you see a big number like that? I mean, maybe some, um, honestly, I think that, you know, my, my view on it before NIL, before we were making money was, was, yeah, like, obviously I would love to be, to be compensated, right. For the things that we do for the university and, and, you know, for the fans and for the football team and for the coaches, right. Like we do a lot for them and their career. And obviously they would say the same thing too. They would be nowhere without us. Right. Coach Hype wouldn't get that bonus if if the players weren't the ones going out and executing and playing and 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 doing all those things. But the reason, again, that I recognize the reason we play that well, the reason that we have had a lot of success is also because of them. So it's twofold, right? It goes back and forth, and and um, you know, one you can't have one without the other. So obviously, it's great to see that that he obviously you know the number is the number, but that he's getting the money that he deserves and and. Um, yeah, that's at least how I look at it. To me, it's, I know it's a big money profession. I know that there's people around the country making millions and millions. And so uh, he's my guy. So obviously I want him to be at the top and I want him to be making the most. So to me, I don't really care. Like, I, I'm getting mine now. I'm getting my, my piece of the pie, if you want to say that. But even before it was, you know, if, if, if a coach deserves that amount of money, then who am I to say that he shouldn't get that much? Or who am I to say that I should be upset that he's getting that much and I'm not getting any, right? So... I guess that's kind of how I look at it. But I, I'm just on a personal level glad it seems a little more fair as the numbers get uh, bigger and, and bigger. One of the things that I found that was uh, very interesting is, let's face it, a lot of coaches can hold, once they have success, they can hold a program hostage and hmm. really dictate what the contract's going to be. And Josh Heupel was in that in that position and he chose not to do that his his buyout if he leaves is eight million dollars which would make it really difficult for another program to hire him away and i think that speaks to the dedication that he has for ut and i i just wonder being a local guy seeing that dedication that this is a destination job. This is not just a rung on the ladder, what that means to you on a personal level. Yeah, obviously. I mean, <clears throat> what was the, what was the, the term? Was it eight years? Yes. Yeah, so it was, uh, if, if he were to get hired away before this upcoming year it would be 8 million. And then next year going into the following year before December the 15th, it'd be $6 million. So that's, that's a heck of a commitment on his end. Yeah. And so obviously you see something like that and that just kind of reassures all the things like, like I mentioned earlier that, you know, he truly does care and he wants to be here and he, he is choosing actively choosing to be here, but also saying, you know, it's going to be hard, very hard for me to, to be enticed to leave. And so, um, yeah, obviously that, that reassures us and that, you know, any questions that we may have or any 
um, speculation that you may see on the internet about, you know, job offers or, oh, I heard he was, he was leaning towards doing this. Like, obviously that stuff's all over social media. And so it's, now it's easy for us to just be like, okay, yeah, like, sure, whatever. You can read that with a grain of salt and just kind of move on because we know that he, he's, he's committed and, and he shows that. And then obviously the deal that he signed. So. Yeah. I mean, if, if I'm busy with a recruit, I'm going to point that out. You know, I'm going to be your coach for the mm-hmm. foreseeable future. I, I just, I thought it was incredibly strong on his part. I, w- I want to ask you if you've ever had the yips, if you've ever had uh, uh, maybe a, a brief moment of losing confidence as an athlete, and it ties into the, the NFL team I cheer first, uh, cheer for. But first, remind everybody it's brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man Alive, it's worth the drive. Bassey Lawn and Garden has the industrial mowers, the commercial mowers, the residential mowers, especially when it comes to industrial and commercial. If you're in Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, wherever he's in Cleveland. And he says that man alive, it's worth the drive because of the buying power that he has. He's going to get you a better price on your fleet to keep everything in line. So I am a, I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, I tend to root for probably like you, more people I know mm-hmm. than an actual team. Um, so there are a lot of guys that I root for Alvin Kamara would be one, but um I've been a Cowboys fan, and I'm watching Brett Maher, the kicker, struggle in the first round of the playoffs with uh, extra points. And so then the same thing happens this past week. And it's such a fine line between being confident and not. Have you ever been at a point in your career where your confidence waned? Um, I mean, yeah, I think that everybody goes through that. Um, I think it's very – very um, different for kickers and, and punters and specialists, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm sure I mentioned on, on, on this show before is um, I'm good buddies with a lot of the kickers, a lot of the punters. And um, it's tough, right? Because, you know, like the Cowboys kicker, it's, you know, you maybe you miss one, right? And just that one is enough to, to in your head, now, you're, now your mind's racing of, okay, what did I do wrong on that one? Like, is that what I always do? Like, did I do something different? And then trying to figure out what that was. And so now you're over adjusting, now you're over correcting. And now you're trying to make sure you, you swing this way or your foot's planted this way. And um, now you're getting away from all the basics that, that you know that have gotten you to that point, right? Obviously, that kicker is an amazing kicker because he wouldn't be the kicker for the, for the Dallas Cowboys if he wasn't one of the best in the world. So, you know, it, it's, it's hard to be – or it's hard to imagine that someone like that in that position cannot feel confident in himself. But at the same time, it's like, you know – Again, it's something that he's done for so long, right? And now, now what's going on? So I think I've probably felt that, you know, um, I think everybody kind of goes through that whenever you're younger, right? Especially when you kind of have to sit and kind of have to just watch other people play and, and not necessarily, you know, get your reps or get your turn on the field. And um, yeah, it can kind of, it can kind of, you know, weigh on you a little bit as like, man, like, okay, is this really, am I really as good as, as I no, I am. You know, what I mean, am I going to get that opportunity? You know, what do I have to do? What am I doing wrong? All those things that kind of go through your head. But at the end of the day, it's just a matter of, of working hard and uh, pushing through it and just understanding that, you know, you have this opportunity for a reason. It's a matter of, am I going to shut down? Right. Am I going to let this, this, um, I guess, lapse in confidence shut me down? Or am I going to let it push me to kind of go and, and go get it? Right. If, if you're not happy with your situation, go change it. So I'm sure I'm sure the kickers from from the Cowboys is probably, you know, upset with himself, but also probably like, all right, well, now I have to go back and, and go back to the drawing board and go back to my fundamentals and, and truly put more work in so that it doesn't happen again. I, I I wonder if that did that happen with you early as an underclassman? I mean, you've grown into a guy that Tennessee can lean on now, but yeah, yeah the, the, you, when, when you came in at first, there was – there were a lot of things going on and it's kind of hard to find your place on the depth chart. How, how tough were those first couple of years? Yeah, they were tough just because I, I was, um, you know, fighting against a lot of different things, right. There was just some, there was people above me in the position group, right. That, that it seemed almost impossible to pass, right. Just because of, of uh, not necessarily status, but just because they were more developed, they were ready to play. I wasn't necessarily ready to play. Right. I, I had a lot of, you know, I had to do a lot of hard work to get my body where it needs to be to actually be able to perform it and play safely, right, on, on, as a tight end in the box and doing those different things. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, I start playing kind of unexpectedly um, in 2020 whenever Austin Pope ends up hurting his back in fall camp. And so now I'm, I'm kind of 
thrown into that really starting position with me and Princeton fan. We had kind of split those reps for the past few years. And um, yeah, there was definitely times where I was like, wow, man, I didn't, I wasn't, wasn't ready for this. Or I don't, I don't know if this is, you know what I mean? Like, this is not, um, it's more than I thought it was going to be right. This is, this is tough. I'm really, and, and I took, the, I decided to take that and be like, wow, okay what do I have to do to prepare myself, you know, mentally, physically. So I understood that I had to take my game to the next level as far as, you know, how do I process things? How do I prepare for games mentally? How do I pre- prepare for games physically, you know, so I'm ready to go out there and, and be my best. And so, yeah, obviously there's, there's maybe a lapse in confidence there at that first moment when you realize like, this is a little bit different than I was expecting. Um, but as a competitor, um, which most guys in play college football are, um, and professional football, obviously, um, you kind of get through that and, and look at it as a chance to kind of kind of grow and get better rather than than, I guess, crawl up in a, in a ball and, and complain about it, I guess. Well, after that, after that season in which you're like, whoa, this is pretty big time. I, th- I think back to uh, Michael Jordan and it would be like one season he would work on his three point shot another season he would work at the spin fade at the elbow and mm-hmm. there was always like an extra thing that he, he would really focus on and add to his game so yeah. when you went from that frustration and, and and maybe a little bit of lack of confidence to the next season mm-hmm. what do you feel like you added um yeah i think i think my mentality changed quite a bit and mentality of of um you know, maybe not necessarily not feeling sufficient or not feeling good enough, but like you said, that confidence piece kind of came in and it was like, okay, I've got a year under my belt, right? Like I've, I've played against all these dudes before I've played against better people. Like I was playing against first rounders and stuff. And I'm like a little retro sophomore, like not knowing, you know, how to really play the game. And um, so I think that that confidence piece going into that off season and just knowing, okay, like, you know, I was, I was really bad at, at this specific detail of a block or, or, um, you know, just, I don't know, different specifics like that where, I, where the things that I realized that may have made me, you know, have a lapse in confidence um, are now very clear, right? And I can go attack those things, which I guess like small details like that of, of maybe a backside cutoff block or, or a base block on the front side of, of a power or something like that. Um, nothing specific that I could really think about, but just stuff like that. Good stuff. He's Jacob Warren, Tennessee tight end, back for another year, and we're certainly uh, pleased with that. The Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it is worth the drive. Again, industrial mowers, commercial mowers. They've got residential as well, but if you're looking to update your fleet and get the best prices possible, I don't care if you're in Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Man Alive, it's worth the drive thanks to their buying power. The Vol Report with Jacob Warren brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Go to Bassey.com. This has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports.